So LCS, the North American competition for League of Legends, owned and, and run by uh, Riot Games, has entered a seven-year deal with cryptocurrency exchange FTX. The value is unknown. Uh, the deal was broken by Jacob Wolf over at Dot Esports and then confirmed shortly after by Riot Games. Now, TSM and FTX entered a 10-year naming rights sponsorship deal a couple of months ago. I think it was in June. Uh, worth $210 million. My understanding is that's $21 million every year that, that the deal goes on. Now, the overwhelming narrative and response to this deal was that it was hypocritical because League of Legends uh, developer Riot Games said that uh, TSM could not use the, the FTX kind of branding uh, on the jersey or in the in-game name, and that's what the deal was. So uh, TSM, all intents and purposes, is now TSM FTX for the next 10 years, all being well. And that's obviously a big hit for TSM because I believe League of Legends is is probably the most lucrative esports deal uh, that it has. Like it's um it's in Fortnite and such, but uh, the the franchise slot or the the, the long term partnership slot that they've got in the LCS will, in theory, be the most lucrative for them in the long term. So obviously, it's a big knock not being able to use your branding and and utilizing the new sponsor you've got that's paying you two hundred and ten million dollars over ten years in in the game and, and on the broadcast, right? And, and so people think because the LCS is going to show FTX all over its its broadcast as part of the deal over seven years, that is hypocritical. Well, the thing is, like as like a key piece of context that that was in the announcement from Riot Games is that. Um, in areas and on broadcasts in areas where there are tight restrictions and regulations around the advertisement of cryptocurrencies and the exchanges for cryptocurrencies, that they would remove that um, that that branding for, uh, and the sponsored segments, or at least the sponsorship of the segment from FTX. So for me, I, I feel personally, just to get this out of the way, TSM should be able to use it in the broadcast, uh, not on the Jersey perspective, but like, wherever the, their branding is involved. And, and that because if you can change some elements of the broadcast, depending on the channel that it's going out on, then surely you could do that for TSM and sweeten the deal a little bit. And obviously that extends into Valorant too, which has the potential to be a really big eSport one day. And, and I imagine is one of the main sources of investment for TSM. Now, the fact that the figure, that the value of this seven-year seven year deal was concealed by Riot Games to me, suggests that they were unwilling to actually say what it was. I'm not sure that they've ever done that before with a partnership deal said, look, this is a three-year deal worth, I don't know, 50 million. I I'm not aware of them doing that. There have been some broadcast and media rights deals um, in which the value has been leaked, whether it's through like a, a public company filing an annual report or just a scoop. Uh, I'm thinking of like the Billy Billy deal is a big example where I think, uh, and, then, and then the Who Your deal, which I think was worth like 350 mil. Though a key piece of uh, context there is the both at least partly owned by Tencent. So it's almost like Tencent giving itself money in in, an, uh, in another just like shell company. It's, it's not quite that simplistic or sinister, but you, you get the deal there. But the fact that the, the value wasn't put out there is interesting. Now, I've heard some ridiculous like guesstimations uh <sighs> And I'm hesitant to share them because, yeah, I don't think they're based in any sort of reality. All I would say is you've got to remember that esports is running on a dream. The dream is one day it'll, uh, leagues like the LCS and the LEC, even the Overwatch League and, and Call of Duty League will be like generational sports. They'll be as big as the NBA, uh, the Premier League, La Liga, all sorts, right? So everything, all the investment that's coming in right now will pay off in the future. So if they're selling a seven-year dream of how big they'll be, to FTX with the context of how they've been over the past five, six, seven years. I don't know exactly when the LCS was started, but say how, like what form the LCS was in in 2017, 2018 versus where it is now. If you're forecasting forward and using a rather generous means of doing so, then you could really sell that the LCS is going to be huge and, and therefore get a fair whack, a fair amount of money out of FTX. But the fact that the value isn't out there, but it was for the TSM deal, makes it seem to me as if FTX are okay with that being the case. Maybe TSM was an exception. But then the value got out there for the stadium rights deal they did in, in sports. I think it was Miami Heat, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, and, and, you know, that they were they were honest about their valuation, which uh, they just raised nine hundred million dollars to like acquire companies to help grow their brand. Which they've only been around two years, and they're already worth eighteen billion. That's that's what they're valued at right now is FTX. So them being in esports, 
it, I guess it kind of depends on your stance on cryptocurrency, but it is nice to have a company that's going to obviously give give companies in esports a lot of money and help them stay afloat. For for TSM, I I'd say it's probably a big relief because they're making money from Blitz and from Icon, which is the agency they use to sell sponsorships against their influencers and their players. They're making money from there, but esports is uh, basically the, the comp sheer competitive side of esports is literally just a loss leading marketing exercise in which you're using it to really build brand affinity with fans and also acquire new fans and then you can sell them via like obviously like uh, sponsorship deals or merchandise or getting them to watch content which is monetized and actually make money off of them that way but the fact that they've got 21 million dollars in the bank for the next 10 years <laughs> it is huge at this point in a company's life cycle in esports especially one where they're spending a lot of money on salaries and you know sending players everywhere and all the extra demands that come with that signing players and stuff right so that's got to be a huge amount of relief uh, that's more than what some organizations that are among the biggest in the industry if you ask most people that's beyond what they're projecting to get in revenue as a whole across their whole business for the next year so and I, I know that for a fact. I've, I've seen the documents, and maybe one day they'll make them out there. Uh, they'll, they'll make it out there, rather. But for now, like this is a really good deal for TSM. But I, I do want to add some caveats onto this. That I, for me, there's a scare in terms of brand association. Not only is there the risk that FTX, like you know, what what if it it collapses in like five years? Uh, I don't believe that it will. But like, why not deal in a hypothetical? So say they're gone in five years, then that $210 million deal has not been realized. The headline was false in a sense. Of course, they did enter a two hundred million, a $210 million deal, but they did not receive that amount of money. And what if TSM are banking on, on that dosh and making presumptions and, 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 you know, operating in a sense that they have that money? And what if they don't have that money any longer? And then that, that could fuck up a lot, you know, uh, especially when like one million is a huge deal for an organization realistically. Uh, never mind 21 each year so that there's a brand association scare as well in the fact that what if it ends up that ftx have done something dodgy or they're embroiled in some pump and dump you know there's a lot of stuff going on in crypto right now where people are really trying to get rich quick i'm not i'm not suggesting that the company would do this but in the off chance that they would that would look really bad if you're tsm and you are basically advertising them throughout everything that you do on social media in broadcasts the like, probably marketing material, uh, at events and such, there'll probably be activations, and if not, they'll at least, in games that are not owned by Riot Games, be advertising at the events themselves, right? What if you're attached to that? I wonder if they have some a clause in a contract where they can get out of it quickly, but then they do lose 210, well, like a fraction of the 210 mil, depending on when this hypothetically happens. You know, there's a lot riding on this for TSM, and I, I, and also as LCS with that association as well, right? Even though they haven't quite taken on like the naming rights sponsorship, which is a bigger deal, a bigger association. You saw what happened with LEC and Neom. I, th I think it was 2020 um, where the, the deal was over in like a day or two uh, because the fans, uh, the overall community, the players, uh, team owners, I think Carlos from G2 spoke out about it on Twitter. And then obviously the casters and the analysts themselves were not happy with it, boycotted the, the league effectively, and then the deal was uh, sealed, but not in the way they were hoping. It was it was done and dusted in terms of being ended rather quickly. What if there was a sharp U-turn on FTX because of something they've done that the community deems not to be acceptable? You know, it doesn't look good on leagues associated with it and, and people associated with it, you know? So that... I, I think that's it. I, I think saying it's hypocritical, somewhat right, but not entirely. Is it a net good, a net positive for esports? I don't know. I don't like the blanket term because this realistically probably won't affect games like PUBG Mobile and stuff, right? Which is very much an esport as, as much as uh, League of Legends and, and specifically the LCSs. Now, this could usher in a new wave of deals. This especially the TSM FTX deal will be used in pitches to brands, especially non-endemic brands or brands from outside of esports and gaming to say, look, they're spending this much money. You can have our naming rights for half of that for 10 years and, and you will reap the benefits just as well, right? So in a sense, it could help to bring in more brands and, uh, and thus secure more revenue and even hopefully make some companies edge towards profitability in the future. But I don't know if it's an entirely net good. I, I think... Part of that comes down to community sentiment because 
realistically, if you piss off the community, then you've lost because they're the ones who watch the matches by the jerseys, sparingly mind, like fans are pretty spoiled. But nonetheless, even though they are spoiled, they are still the lifeblood of the industry. As much as if we didn't have players, then we wouldn't have esports. If we didn't have fans, they could be competing, but it would not be um, as a profession. It would solely be as a hobby, right? So I, I think community sentiment is a huge thing. And, and if there's a massive turn on crypto or FTX specifically in the next few years, a lot can happen in 10 years. We, we've seen how quickly NFTs have come. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it could go really bad, but uh, that that's, that's my two cents on it. It's not inherently bad for LCS or TSM. It's not inherently good for the entire industry, though it could have some positive ripple effects. Uh, I just hope FTX are legit. There's no reason to assume that they wouldn't be right now besides the fact they're in an industry which has got some bad actors in it, but that's every industry and especially esports. So I can't I can't really like speak from that front as if we're all holy and pure, but by no means is that the case. But uh, I just wanted to document this. Uh, good luck with your ten, uh, $210 million, Reggie and, and Lena. Uh, hopefully don't throw FTX under the bus like uh, Lena did with Lenovo. I'm surprised that deal's still going. I'm pretty sure it is. I think I saw something about it the other day. Uh, don't throw them under the bus. Make, you've secured the bag now. Make sure you keep it firmly in your grasp. LCS, I mean, I think viewership's dwindling there anyway. And I'm not really sure why it's classed as a major region, North America, when compared to China, Korea, and LEC. But nonetheless, this this shows that Riot Games in North America has a bit of clout with non-endemic brands. It also probably helps that um, LCS has TSM in it, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I think overall it's good. But again, a lot of it will be decided by the community. I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.